In this After Effects tutorial, we're gonna create a continuous circle inspired from the Apple Watch commercials. Hey, what's going on internet? Josh Noel from Sunduck Film. So I thought this was a great tutorial because actually creating this circular loop is not as easy as it seems, but in this tutorial, we'll make it easy. So let's go into our new composition over here called tutorial. I already have a background in here with a gradient ramp on here, um, but that doesn't really matter. We're just focusing on the circle. So let's go here to the top and let's grab the ellipse tool and let's just click a point and hold down shift and we'll draw out a perfect circle like this. I know mine's a little bit weird compared to yours, but we'll fix this up in a second and that should be okay for now. And let's go into the fill up here at the top, click the word fill and turn it off, click none. And your stroke will probably be set to just a solid color and that's just fine. So let's come here, click on the word stroke and set it to a linear gradient and click okay. And let's make sure to go up to window align and center this up just using the center buttons here and that's looking pretty good if we need to scale this up even more we can you know just bring this out hold down shift and we'll have a proportionally scaled circle so let's you know gradient this thing properly let's open up the ellipse one go into the gradient stroke now if you didn't do this from the top you can always go to add and add gradient stroke this way just make sure to delete the stroke property but anyway let's go into edit gradient and here we can select, you know, maybe two colors just by clicking on the little uh, color stops here and just, you know, select two proportional colors. I'll maybe just do like, you know, red like that. And then I have like sort of a light magenta or pink, should I say more pink color here. And that should be okay and click okay. So we need to kind of balance this out where the beginning of our color starts at the top and the bottom. And we can kind of see these two dots right here, which are basically the start point and end point. And we go to the start point parameters over here and we start, you know, touching that up. You can see this uh, start point moving. Let's go to the Y value here and bring this all the way to the top here where it's right over, right over the top of our ellipse there. And then set the end point to zero for the X value and bring it down to the Y right here. So I am jumping ahead here because I did encounter a problem. Make sure the start point is right underneath the circle and the end point as well or you'll have a bad time. Just letting you guys know that ahead of time because I made this problem a little bit further on in the tutorial. And also keep in mind, I'm using a stroke width of 125. You can use whatever. But once we have our gradient in place, let's go to add and let's add a trim paths. And let's open this tab up and let's decrease the end to 0%. And as you see, we kind of have this animation going on here. Let's add a keyframe for end. Let's move forward in time, maybe two seconds, maybe three seconds, four seconds. It all depends on how long you want this animation to be. We'll set the end value to 100% and now we have that. And let's go back into our gradient stroke and let's set the line cap to round cap. So now it won't be cut off, it will be nice and round and it's looking pretty decent. So let's go ahead and close this up. Let's rename this layer to colored circle. Perfect. And then let's go up to edit duplicate. And let's go ahead and rename this one to clear circle. Great, and let's go to the stroke type here at the top and let's just set this to a solid color and change the color to just white. And let's set the opacity down to maybe 25% and hit T on your keyboard for opacity and bring this layer underneath our colored circle. And then let's just hit U on our keyboard for trim paths and let's just go to where it says 100% uh, delete the keyframes. So now we'll just see the circle here in the background that's gonna be highlighted by this uh, growing circle just like that. Let's duplicate our colored circle once more. And this time let's go into the uh, stroke value here at the top or the color. And let's change the uh, last color here, the red color to, you know, maybe a different color. It could be like another shade of red or I'm just gonna, for tutorial purposes, I'm probably just gonna make this kind of a little dramatic. Maybe I'll go right to orange or something yellow. The thing to keep in mind is that you don't wanna change the color of the first color stop here if you wanna have a seamless loop. But once you have your color picked out for the last stop here, click OK. So let's just hit U on our keyboard to bring up the keyframes. And let's take our duplicated circle here and just offset it all the way here, like to the keyframes matchup. And now we can kind of see what's going on with the new circle here. So what we're going to do is just duplicate the colored circle to here and just bring it to the bottom. We'll rename this layer to uh, shadow. And we'll go back up to the stroke and set it to solid color. And we'll set the color right to black. 
All right, now we're looking decent. Let's go up to Effect, Blur, Gaussian Blur. And we'll just really blur this out. And we'll just really crank this up to maybe like 40 or so. And what we need to do is grab the pen tool here at the top. Make sure to switch this to the mask control, which is over here at the top. Make sure to click that on. And we just need to cut out this back part here. So just boom, cut around this and that should be good. And what we'll do is hit F on our keyboard for feather, increase that by a touch and set the mask one to subtract. So now it's already being seamlessly cut together, but the only thing is the edges are kind of a little bit too strong. And that's looking pretty decent, but instead of just being abrupt like this, let's hit T on our keyboard, make sure it's the first frame of this layer, add a keyframe for opacity, uh, bring that keyframe forward in time just by a few frames and set it down to 0%. So it'll kind of just fade on in there, maybe make this last keyframe an easy ease keyframe by hitting F9 on your keyboard, and nice. So let's go to our clear circle and let's duplicate it and rename it to matte. Let's bring it above our shadow layer and set the shadow layer to alpha matte. And then let's just go to our matte layer, hit T on our keyboard for opacity and bring it all the way back up to 100%. And now we have that very nice shadow. And I'm just gonna come here and recolor code some of our layers here. So we basically have, you know, made this loopable and created that nice shadow. Let's go ahead and close up this matte and let's come here, let's duplicate our elements, bring them to the top and we can come here and just offset it by a touch. Maybe once this is at the bottom, like right here, we can bring this on like this. We go to our new duplicated circle, go to our stroke color, change that last color to, you know, maybe whatever color we want so we can create a difference there. And we scrub through here, we have this beautiful loop. So let's talk about actually putting objects between the circle here, kind of like what I did in my uh, demo here, kind of the text is behind the circle here, but on top of it on this side, let's talk about doing that. And of course you can use, you can do this for pretty much anything with live action footage or, you know, logos or just, you know, text, which I'm just going to use here. So I'm going to grab my textile tool and type out my text continuous and go to the line tab and we'll put this right here. And the first thing I'm going to do is just pre-compose this layer and call it placeholder. All right. So let's bring our placeholder text right to the bottom so it's just there. So let's duplicate one of the mats and our placeholder text. Let's bring these to the top here and let's rename the mat layer to uh, mat placeholder. And that should be good. Let's recolor code these. And let's set the track mat for our placeholder to alpha mat. And let's turn off our bottom text. And of course, what we need to do is make sure our map placeholder is extended all the way over our entire comp. And as you can see, we have the text right on top here. And that's pretty decent, but we don't want the text on here. So what we can do is just grab the pen tool, make sure your placeholder is selected and just draw like a very rough box around your you know, placeholder just like this. And hit M on your keyboard and click on subtract. Then let's take both of these elements, duplicate it, and let's bring it right above our clear circle and go back into like say the mask here, delete it. And let's set the track mat to alpha inverted mat. And now we kind of have this nice loop that's gonna go right through it like this. And you see everything will kind of compile right on top of each other. And we can go inside the placeholder here. You know, maybe even animate this by hitting P on our keyboard for position, add a keyframe for it. Maybe just turn on transparency here and we can just, you know, animate it. Now, of course, we can always drop in, say, our logo as well. You can always add in like a green screen footage. Um, bring my logo here, go to effect, generate, fill. You know, let me set this to black. And then let's go back into our tutorial here. And now you see the duck is in here, but there's a few issues. That's a little bit too big anyway. Let's just go ahead and scale this down by a little bit. You know, and as you see, when we add a logo, we just have this little extra thing we have to mask out here. So just grab like one of the diversity points and it doesn't work out that it's actually black. So let me just change that color real fast and just come here, bring that out. And really the thing is you don't want to have like complete, uh, you know, actual object between like you want some white here in the background you don't want to have this completely filled, filled up with an object or the entire effect is pretty much going to be killed so just going to have some white space between you know this side and that side underneath here just really sell that effect and now you can add pretty much any object that you want in here and you know now you can continue to loop this you know by duplicating you know the actual layers in here bring them to the top and offsetting them so we can have this going on forever and we can constantly change the bottom color here 
And if you were following along with this tutorial, this is what you should have gotten. And I do like this tutorial just because it did involve a little bit of problem solving. But I hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, please drop a like and subscribe to the channel for more After Effects videos just like this. And please be sure to hit me up on my social media networks. Those links are in the description of this video. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching this video and I hope you have a good day.